Another time, we'll use our social engineering toolkit to create computerized attacks or social engineering attack. So in this demo, we're going to go ahead and use a web template. And we'll clone a website and provide the link to the users so they might become victims in our, in our phishing attack. Right? Now here, you have to choose option one for social engineering at attacks. And then we'll go ahead and choose option two, which is a web attack vector. Now notice how many options you have and how many attacks you can create with this tool. So spear phishing, website attack, payload and listener, mass email, etc. We looks like we have 11 options. So let's go for option two, which will help us to create a website. Now I want to choose the Metasploit browser attack because I want to show you how set works with Metasploit. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to choose option two. And here you have the option to use one of the templates that are already in set, or you can clone and use the, the site if it's not, to, not available with the, in the web template. Now you can also import some other website, maybe let's say a, a private website. For example, I, I don't know, maybe your, your company or whatever. Anyway, so go ahead and choose web templates. Now, we're using that, I and uh, I'm forwarding the connection back from my machine. Now, this is helpful. Where? When the victim clicks the link on the phishing link that we will send later on. Now, the connection should be redirected to the real website in the end. So if I'm phishing on Facebook or Gmail, the connection should not be blocked, but should proceed to the original website, which is, let's say, Facebook. Okay, So you need for, for that for forwarding and, um, and also for port forwarding. Now, you can actually do this by typing a few commands, but I can tell set that no, I'm not, and will and it will configure it for me, okay? So we're done here. We got 192.168. The connection should come back to this computer, this host. So here's the IP address of this host. Now, which website you wish to use as a template? I'm going to use option four for Facebook. Whatever else could, could work here, any, anything really. Um, now, I use the Facebook, that's understandable. Now, which exploit you wish to use for the browsing? So when the user will click on the link that we are to send, which exploit will be used? And really, we have many options here, as you can see. So if you know your victim, what does he have? Particularly, let's say if you know that his browser is Internet Explorer and it's vulnerable to this exact vulnerability, yep, you can use this vulnerability. But I'm going to use the last one, which is option 41 for Metasploit browser auto password or auto pin. Um, in the Metasploit browser, auto PWN, I have also a few options. I can use Windows Shell Reverse TCP. This is for 32-bit uh, and Meterpreter 32-bit. Um, I have here two, so this is the same, but, but for 64, which is here, Windows Shell Reverse 64 and Meterpreter 64. Okay, I have a few, few other stuff, and I have, let's see, the last one, download and run your own executable. If you have your own executable payload to combine with this website, that's perfect also. So I'm going to use, let's say, Meterpreter 64 if I know that my victim will be a 64-bit machine, and option 7. Now, am I right? Yes, this is Meterpreter 64. Port uh, 443 is the default port to use for reverse, but it's, it's better to, to change 6666 and enter, and then start the server, right? Now, first of all, it's going to start MSF, uh, Metasploit Framework, and after that, it'll start the server, which will have the Facebook website loaded on, onto it. So when the victim clicks on the link, then it's going to be redirected first to our website, record his, record his credentials, and then he'll be forwarded to the Facebook's real site. So we can see here that Metasploit has started. Looks like we're good here. Everything is working perfectly. Now, notice that the servers here are being started on our RP, IP address and you'll see the payload, but not yet. Wait until the process is finished because we'll not send anything like this to the client. Give it a few seconds. 
And the cool thing is, which you'll, you'll see in a bit, that the link is really not very suspicious because when, when you have it to, to, to send a link like this one with some rubbish, your victim might suspect something. But anyway, uh, we're, we're going to hide this link under another hyperlink. So if you can go to Microsoft Office Word and type www.facebook.com, and the hyperlink, and then replace the, the site, facebook.com, with your link, then it will not be very suspicious, unless the victim tries to inspect the link to see where it's taking him. Otherwise, uh, what I'm saying is he'll, he will not suspect anything because the hyperlink will really seem to be going taking him right to facebook.com, but underneath it, there's this link that I've typed in here. So this is actually what I would send to the victim. HTTP colon forward slash forward slash uh, 192.168.0.109 um, port uh, or colon 80 on port 80. So eight, port 8080. I'm not going to send him anything that reveals that there is a payload, just an IP address. And if the IP address was public, it's much, it would be much better also. Now, I just need to send this IP address to a user to click on it, and I can see the process has started. I can see that the set and metasploit typically here are, are having connections back and forth, and you can type here sessions-i to list these sessions that are available for us to control the users that are connected or really had fallen, fallen victim to your attack. So, Ammon, we're going to talk about spear phishing okay. really quick for a second. It's an important part of what we do. It's the same as regular phishing email, except it's sent to a specific user. That spear goes to one person. Right. The hacker will pretend to be a legitimate party, try to establish a connection with the victim, again, based on trust, therefore getting the opportunity to extort information. Gotcha. 